No, 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 no. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Those are me bite. <laughs> Just go up high, Tom. Higher? Go up high, yeah. Okay. Because then that way it won't shoot the film like it's looking up my nose. That's really, it's pretty. Yeah, you're halfway in. Yeah, Perfect frame. Right there. Thank you, brother. So this is uh, Tom. He's been trying to help us get our stuff uh, on the YouTube. We have a YouTube channel and get it out there. So that way the services we can put out there in um, cyberspace, um, you know, get everything dialed in. If you have a Bible tonight, turn to John uh, 13. Lord, I just thank you, Father, for this time uh, with uh, my brothers and sister. And we thank you, Lord, for your word coming forth and, Lord, just changing us and, and drawing us, Lord. Um, this is the time of the supernatural, the time of your eternal word, the time of your eternal power to come down and to transform. We thank you, Lord, for uh, the resurrected Christ in us and moving in this meeting right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, um, in uh, John 13, 31, <clears throat> hallelujah. You guys there? Amen. It says, so when he had gone out, Jesus said, now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and glorify him immediately. Little children, I shall be with you. A little while longer, you will seek me. And as I said to the Jews, where I'm going, you cannot come. So now I say to you, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, and that you also love one another. By this all will know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. <clears throat> yeah, so he says, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. And that's... Uh, that's something that uh, that we know that somebody's a believer if they're loving folks, you know what I mean? Now I want you to turn to um, Thessalonians um, 2. Yeah, Thessalonians 2. So uh, when when we're talking about love, it's, it's, a, it's not something that you generate. It's not something that you try to muster up with your own strength. It's something that happens to you when you pass from death to life, all of a sudden, when you say yes to Jesus and he moves on the inside of you, the love of God starts manifesting in your heart and he will bring um, truth and light in, on the inside of you. It's not something that you do, it's something that you are because God is love. And it's, Jesus said, I and the Father are one. And he said that, um, you know, you, you and I are one. He says, if I'm in you and you're in me, you could ask what you want, and whatever it is that you ask, it'll be done. Because you're not asking from the standpoint of a faithless prayer. You're not asking for, from a selfish prayer. It could be things for yourself, you know, but it's not based in um, in human activity. It's based in supernatural activity. He says, you know, that the world might know that we're one. Somebody sent me this text today. It said. Um, you can still love somebody or have relationships from somebody if they leave your church and, and they don't go there anymore because we're not gang members. It was, it was a text somebody sent me. I was laughing about that. You know that it's not uh, denominations. There's only two types of people in the world, believers and unbelievers. Believers are saved. Unbelievers are damned. Very easy, very straight, very simple. And, um, and uh, you know, in 2 Thessalonians 2, it says, Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, and the son of perdition who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshiped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do not remember, do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who has now restrains 
will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. I love that. God's, Jesus is coming. He came first as um, a lamb. He's coming back, you know, as a warrior on a white horse. His robe's dripped in blood, the Bible says. Um, and here he says that, that um, the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth. It says that his eyes are like fire, you know, and, and his uh, voice is thunder. So he's going to consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy it with the brightness of his coming. So just the brightness of the Lord's coming, they wicked uh, cannot contain it. And the coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteousness, deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. Remember, we're talking about love. He says, I give, give you a new commandment that you love one another. And then the, the Bible says in John, this is he um, who loves me, who keeps my commands. And what is his new commandment? That you love one another. See, the Ten Commandments were, five commandments were towards God, and five commandments were towards how you treat your man, fellow man. Five commandments were how you treat God. Five commandments were how you treat your fellow man, the Ten Commandments. But he says there's no law against love. Because if you love somebody, you want their best interest. And so you're not going to steal from them. You're not going to hurt them. Basically, if you love God, you can do as you please because you don't need any rules on your life because you're not out of control. You're only going to help people. You're only going to love people. You're only going to benefit other people. You're never going to be a taker. You're, you're only going to be a giver. The idols that are lifted up in the hearts um, of people are destructive. You know, he was talking about um, God is a jealous God. And so we have to look at our lives and dethrone things that um, we put, you know, as higher uh, than God. Things that you love more than God. You need to pull those down because Jesus loved you and went to the limit. You know, when I was worshiping here, I was thinking of Jesus in the garden when the, the blood was uh, coming out of his pores when he was praying. I said, Lord, I won't forget the sacrifice. And I said, Lord, I won't forget the blood that you dripped out of your skin in such intense intercession for humanity. I won't forget it. And Lord, let me come into that place of prayer that destroys the devil and brings life. Show me how to pray in the intensity like that. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. I have never prayed so intense that blood was coming out of my skin. Man, I've sweat before. I've had some prayers of war and intercession that has shaken things. But um, sometimes I've sat down to pray and I'm going to pray for four or five hours in tongues and I pray for an hour and then I wake up four or five hours later. I slept for four hours and prayed for one. You know, <laughs> that's not what I'm trying to do. Uh, so sometimes I got to get up and walk. If it's been a long day, I got to walk because then, but now look at this here. He says here, he says that, uh, the lawless one, according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, the Lord Jesus is coming. And there's there's agendas nowadays in the government that exalt itself against God. He says, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God. The government and some people in the government, they want to play, take the place of God. Satan wants to set up governments that are occultish and, and wrong. I was just watching last night some witches and witchcraft on uh, YouTube because I was amazed at how deceived the church is today with the level of demonic that's there. I saw different um, famous politicians that you all know and movie stars that are consulting, you know, warlocks and witches. And I began to pray for this actual witch that I, when I turned it on, and I saw what they were doing and the, the covens they were doing and the stuff they were doing in blood. And, you know, Epstein had a... He had a temple on that island towards Satan, you know. They were doing all that sex trafficking. This, these kids, a lot of political leaders that I could name right now, were doing uh, very perverse acts with them. One thing I did like about some of the presidents that we've seen, you know, um, some of the ones when they seek godly counsel or they're asking for prayer, you know, or they're, they're open to that. But we've had ones, Satan has tried very hard to get a witch in the White House, you know. But it hasn't happened, and he won't have 
he won't have uh, this country. This country was ordained uh, to do a work. Um, this country was founded on, on God's principles, and so was Israel. Um, and we're fighting, and we're praying, and we're declaring, and we're doing war. But when I read this and I see this, who oppose and exalt himself above all that is called God, the government wants you to look to them for your, the provision instead of God. The government wants you to look to them for education instead of God. The government wants you to look to them for your health care instead of God. You need to put God first in your life. And now that's the only way. It says all who trust in the Lord, you know, shall not be put to shame. You will be put to shame, my friends, if you trust in your own ability, if you trust in the government, if you trust in these other things. And then here, this says, then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth. I saw these Antifa people going crazy in the streets, harming, um, you know, just this last week, I saw somebody in a uh, spa who uh, was there with their daughter, and she was talking on, I saw it on YouTube, where she was talking about how this guy came in who called himself a woman, but he showed his privates to her and her, her daughter, who's, um, I think she was like 12 years old, mm -hmm. and she was upset about it. Uh, six years old that's that's even worse it was anyways it was young but then what happened is Antifa came out and they they so harassed the people that were doing a peaceful march uh, resisting this perversion and this uh, you know craziness that Antifa came out in California and they were uh, getting you know really worked up and violent and their new tactic is to use umbrellas so they can hide um, the cameras from seeing who it is and they hide themselves and they're very violent and they pick on they were picking on these older women um, I saw down here in Portland where Antifa came out and they were harassing some of our veterans they had an older veterans get together for a prayer march well there happened to be some young veterans in there too and when they pushed one of these old men down one of these one guys because our mayor you know was not releasing the police to protect this uh, get together this prayer get together but I was laughing because when this young vet comes down, pop, he breaks this guy's nose. One hit wonder, poof, the Antifa guy's down. This one dude chased like 10 Antifa guys down the road. They didn't know that there were some young veterans in, in the group. And these guys are warriors. They ain't no little punks who are lawless sitting in their parents' basement and don't have a job or whatnot. But these guys are nuts. These, these people that are coming against our... It's a lawless thing. And here you can see it's, it's a lawless type of an attitude. So we will cut off the head of the lawless attitude and this, this, uh, uh, this agenda that wants to hurt the innocent and devour. We will, we will cut its throat. Uh, we will come against it. And it's a spirit, really, is what I'm trying to say. Is there's a, here's, he's talking about Satan. But you see Satan working through people. Okay, that's what I'm getting at. You see Satan working through agendas. But we wrestle not against flesh and blood, even though we might have to physically knock out somebody if we're in the streets and we have to stand up for a little old lady or an older man that doesn't have the power to do so. Um, you know, we, you are people of God. You're, you're called to stand up and fight and never back down. That's against Satan. But that's also standing up for people that can't defend themselves too physically at times. You, sometimes you have to do that. But um, here it is. Uh, uh, one time I was down there preaching the gospel to a bunch of teenagers and we had this gospel campaign going on with these concerts and stuff and we had the Lafarge Center, we'd give out free pizza and, and do, do uh, just ministry, man, for the street kids every week, every Friday. And one time, all of a sudden, crack, somebody punched me in the back of the head. So I turned around and I just, full force, you know, just snapped this, this person in the nose and dropped them. And they were like, hey, I thought you were a pastor. I said, I am. And they're like, well, and I'm like, I said, um, what's the point? You know, like they could just go hit, just punch a pastor. I didn't even think twice. I just dropped them. They're on the floor. They're, they're just squirming. Their nose is really hurting. I may, may have broke it. I don't know. Um, but it's like, I'm not trying to be violent, but, uh, but also God hasn't called me to be a pushover or back down ever. You know, when we're bringing the gospel and we're coming against these forces, we don't, we don't back down. We're not ones that back down. Um, and God saved me many times, not using physical force, but just, you know, angels showing up and helping us from getting killed out ministering. But um, here he talks about the lawless one, unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth. Isn't that interesting? The love. Let's love the truth. 
let's ask the Lord to do a work in our heart to where we're not trying to change uh, the word of God to justify the stuff that we're walking in. But let's love the truth so much that we say that, Lord, if there's something in my heart that doesn't line up with your word, you remove it. Those things that are in you, Jesus, that are not in me, I want you to put them in me. And those things that are in me that are not in you, remove them. That's going to be your prayer. you got to love the truth. Who is the truth, Jesus? He's the walking truth. He's the walking word. You know, he's the truth and the life. Come on. And so they didn't receive Jesus, really, is what it is here. It says they didn't love the truth. They didn't love Jesus. Jesus says, if you love me, you love the Father. If you love me, you're receiving the one who sent me. See? And really what it is, is they didn't love the Creator. See? Because they didn't love... Because God is truth. He's love. And he's, he's truth. And... Um, and then it says, for this reason, God will send them a strong delusion that they should believe the lie. Now, listen to that. Hmm. Listen to our father is going to send them a strong delusion. Why? Because of a heart condition. It didn't say because of their ignorance or because of their mental status was low. Because the Bible says that Jesus was thanking the father. He said, I thank you that, you know what, you've opened this up. To many of them that are not very smart or rich in this world, you know, and all that. And so he did say that, you know. So we know that God is not uh, accepting or rejecting anybody based on their intelligence because he's, he's no respecter of persons. And sometimes we don't have that intelligent of sheep, you know, or people. And so here, because they did not love the truth, he actually gave them a lie. And I think, isn't it in Ezekiel 14 where he talks about an idol? And I I may be wrong here on my, my passage, but there's another place where it's, I, I believe it's in Ezekiel, and I'll find it if, if uh, somebody challenges me here or out in YouTube land. But there's a place where it says, because you've lifted up an idol in your heart. In other words, you loved something more than me. I gave my life for you. God gave his life for you is, is what he did. And he loves you with an everlasting love. But it says, because you lifted an idol up in your heart, I'm going to answer you according to your idol. Well, if your idol is money, maybe you're going to get a strong delusion that everything is about money. And then you'll get off on the wrong track mm. and you'll either die in your iniquity and sin and be destroyed. Or you'll get into that idol so far you'll realize this is empty, dry, and it doesn't fulfill because sin has a way of taking you farther than you want to go, making you pay more than you want to pay and stay longer than you want to stay. And you come to the end of yourself like the prodigal son and say, man, it would be better if I was with my father. But I was, I was looking at this. It's interesting that in, and I believe it's Ezekiel 14, and here it says, I'm going to answer you according to an idol. Or because you didn't love the truth, I'm going to give you a delusion, a lie, Right? For this reason, you will send them strong delusion. Not a lie, but it says strong delusion. Look that up and look that up in the, um, the original text and pick that apart. That they should believe the lie. He's going to give them a delusion that they may believe a lie. That they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. They had pleasure in it. Well, there's a lot of people that are having pleasure in unrighteousness today. There's been a great falling away of that. What does it mean when, it, when someone falls away? That means at one point they were there, but they fell from it. Now, can you take yourself, can, can, can the devil pull you out of God's hand? No, he cannot. It says you're sealed with the Holy Ghost. But can you walk away? And can you, you know, basically be sideways and, and lift up idols in your heart? Yes, you could. And now we're going to look at verse 13. But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. It's important to believe the truth. I'm telling you, my friends, today I shoot straight and sometimes I get people that will cuss me out, threaten me and whatever. I don't really care about all that. What I care about is, is the Father happy with me? What I care about, if I stand before him, are we good? We have people today that will use this term, but that's your truth. No, 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 no. There is absolute truth, and there's absolute lies. 
And if you go down a way of believing wrong, you're going to end up somewhere in a different place. The Bible talks about foolish people who are always learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Who people who are deceptive creep in and lead away these people in foolishness. And it's people that are just really um, seeking fairy tales and fables. They want an easy word. They want, they want to think that you can believe anything and be okay. You cannot believe anything and obey. The Bible says, be careful how you believe because what you believe, that's who you are. Okay? So we don't, we don't believe paganism. We don't believe uh, the occult, the spiritism. We don't believe uh, that uh, the society has it right when they say you can choose whatever sex you want. We don't believe in um, marriage that um, is between two men or two women. That's not marriage. That's perversion. And that's not pride, that's shame. But God comes with his blood and covers all my sins, thank God. And there were many in the areas of everything. And it, they'll cover their shame too, the people that are caught up in that. And uh, we don't believe in sleeping together outside of marriage or living together. We don't believe any of this stuff. We believe in having a hot relationship with Jesus and getting your life right. Is there grace? Have we all done the stuff that I mentioned? Yeah, we have. We've all. I'm not pointing the finger at anybody. I thank God for his grace. But we don't tolerate it when we come to Christ because the same love and blood that has saved us also changes us and causes us to walk right in his way. So here he says, stand fast. And he says that, um, that chose you for salvation through sanctification by the spirit and belief in the truth to which he called you by our gospel, to which he called you by our gospel for the obtaining of the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you were taught, whether by word or epistle. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and our God and Father, who has loved us and given us everlasting consolation and good hope by grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. You have to stand fast, my friends, in the truth. There is truth and there's lies. And this idea of, the, of that's your truth or what is your truth, that's crap. Don't get caught up in this idea. Well, it's really, you know, what you believe. No, there's actually, there's, there's, there's facts. There's laws of gravity. You know, I don't care if you don't believe in gravity. Unless God does a miracle and you get thrown off a cliff, you're going to fall and die. Well, that's your truth. No, that's just the way it is. <laughs> that is, that is. Now, I will say this. There are facts of this world that can be changed by the truth of God. The fact is you might have a terminal disease, but the truth is the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus made me free from law of sin and death. And if you can get a hold of that, you can change that disease that the doctors say is terminal or by natural causes, there's no way you can live. But with God's truth, you can change that. But that's not your truth. That's God's written truth and that's his word. And when you declare and decree God's truth on earth, you can see facts and things change in this earth. You can speak to a storm and it'll be still. You can command a devil to come out of yourself or others. You can speak to a sickness and disease and it has to obey you. So in that realm, you know, sometimes truth and facts can vary. Truth can change facts. But this idea of, you know, it's okay for you to believe however you want to believe and that's your space, that's hogwash. Mm -hmm. There's right and there's wrong. There's black and there's white. And uh, there's, no, there's no middle ground when it comes to the blood of Jesus. You either have him in your life or you don't. It does not matter how many services you've attended. It does not matter how many uh, scriptures you've memorized. If you don't have Christ's blood washing you, if you have not invited him on the inside, those who have, have the Son have life. Those who do not have the Son do not have life. It doesn't matter how many church camps you've attended or what kind of um, tithes and offerings you've given, none of that matters. The only the question is, is your life filled with the Son of God? Has you, He come in? Have you invited Him in? Have you passed from death to life? And when that happens, love will get a hold of you, mm. and you will change. Mm. But sometimes people's perception of love is mamby-pamby. It's not really true love. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, who the Lord loves, He disciplines, He corrects. You know, and so sometimes people think it's love just to say, hey, you're okay, I'm okay. No, that's not the case. 
You know, if, if uh, sometimes love, love comes in a size 12 foot right in the rear. You know, that's just the way it is. And um, it's better to get stung by a bee than hit by the Mack truck. You know, it's like your true friends, they're going to tell you the truth, man. That's love. They might insult you a little bit, but they care about you. That's love. It isn't just, you know, this whole woke culture is ridiculous. Mm. We need to call it out because it's demonic and it's, and it's of the devil and we need to see it. And we need to know it and we need to walk in truth. So um, I, just wanted to, I just want to encourage you guys right there. It says stand firm, you know, stand. And that's what I want to encourage you tonight. And I also want to encourage you if you've lifted up idols in your heart, if you put up idols that you love more than God, you're going to be in a strong delusion and you will not see the truth. You better ask the spirit of truth to open your eyes. You better start praying in other tongues a lot so that that, that revelation can come and open, open your eyes. If you've placed uh, things in your heart um, that you love more than God, there's a strong delusion that will come. And you'll think you're okay and you're really okay. You're, to you're not okay. You're lost. And so I want you to examine that and say, God, you know, maybe your, your, um, your idols are things that are not like drugs and alcohol. Maybe your idol is that you have like a bunch of um, uh, college degrees and you, you think you're better than other people and God can't come and move in your life because you're prideful. Maybe um, you've gone through seminary and you know a bunch about the word in scripture, but religion has taken the place of relationship where Jesus has sitting there and now you're robbed and your idol is religion. So God can't even touch you because you're like the Pharisees and the Sadducees that think you're, you're all that in a bag of chips, but you're really lost. We need to really examine ourselves in this last day. There's a lot of people that are living in a delusion. There's people that are lawless, but there's even people that go to church every week that do not have a relationship with Christ. They're not saved. They're not born again, and they need to embrace Christ. It's not about any of the, your church attendance or any money you give. It's only about the blood of Jesus. It's the blood of Jesus that made the difference for me. And when I accepted him in my heart, he set me free of demons. He healed me. He touched me. He changed me. And his love came in. And people that I wanted to kill, I actually wept over because I saw them lost and broken as Jesus saw me. Total different perception. Total paradigm shift. You know what repentance really is? It's a totally different way of thinking because Jesus comes on the inside of you. And now you see with his eyes. Okay, you hear with his ears and you feel with his heart. And it changes you. you you're not the same. You, you can't stay the same and encounter uh, Christ. And Lord, I pray right now that you touch, Lord, these ones that are here and those ones that might be watching on uh, the internet. And we ask that you would set free, Lord, those that might be tonight. Um, have been caught up in addiction, su suicide, or in depression. I see that one right now as I'm praying. I see a, a young man, he kind of has shoulder length hair, and you've been struggling with depression. You've even been thinking about suicide, but God is breaking that off of you right now. And I believe um, there's some that are struggling with their identity. And God is saying to you, get your identity in me. It's not in these other things, for I will set you free. And, and uh, Lord, I just lift up those, Lord, today, that Lord would be struggling in immorality or maybe homosexuality, Lord, that you would just set them free with your precious love and you would drive those spirits out of them that would want to some of those to get sex changes and stuff, those demon spirits that are messing with humans. I rebuke you now by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. You go from them now. I said now in Jesus' name. I command you by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. I break your hold now. And I loosen, Lord, your love and your life, Lord, to those tonight, God, that are bound uh, by uh, all these addictions. For Jesus, you truly are the mighty deliverer. I thank you for it. Amen. Amen. Praise, the Praise the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb.